Hello and welcome to your gut health guide. This is why the gut health is so important is one, energy. A healthy gut can actually naturally boost energy levels. Another one is weight management. Gut health can help support and maintain a healthy weight, whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight. Skin. Good gut health can lead to a long-lasting, glowing complexion. Digestion. So if you're experiencing bloating or gas or poor digestion, or these are signs of a poor gut. Next is our mental health. If we're in that good mood and our brain and mental health are linked to a good gut. So let's find out some of the signs of an unhealthy gut. You can either kind of jot these down, circle them, whatever you need to. Just kind of understand if you have any of these and how we can link them to our gut health. First one is digestive issues. This would be things like constipation or diarrhea or a combination of both. So IBS is a, is a common one we see with an unhealthy gut. Other things would be mood issues. These could be things like mood swings, uh, super irritable, irrational, just feelings of... Um, just the, the moodiness that we go through. Next would be vitamin and mineral deficiencies, headaches or even brain fog, sugar cravings, onset of diabetes, inflammation related to autoimmune diseases, lack of energy or fatigue, skin problems, GERD or heartburn, weight gain, anxiety or panic attacks, and hormone imbalances. Okay, so after 40, women experience a decline in the diversity of beneficial gut bacteria, leading to difficulties in removing excess hormones from the body. So let's look into the hierarchy of health here. So um, we've done this with hierarchy of hormones, but let's look actually the hierarchy of health. So the bottom one is the nervous system. Stress messes with your gut by changing its balance of good bacteria making it more leaky and worsening our digestion through it's having the through the effects of the gut brain connection. The nervous system affects digestion and the digestion affects hormones. Your gut microbiome works with your liver and helps remove hormones from the body and supports detoxification, which then leads to your immune system. This is the quality of life where we're either having autoimmune disorders and that basically just means that body is starting to attack itself. And we don't want that, okay? So let's look at the center of our health. The gut is the center truly of our health. The gut is the second brain. It's responsible for producing neurotransmitters via the vagus nerve. It absorbs our nutrients, trill has trillions of bacteria. It helps the immune system, maintains our metabolism, the vitality of our skin, hair, and body, clarity of mind, and unlocks energy. So 90%, I don't know if you guys knew this. This is a good little fun fact. 90% of our body serotonin, which is our feel-good hormone that, that regulates our mood, is actually produced in the gut. Interesting, huh? It's not about how many calories you're eating. It's how many you're absorbing. So, so many people are like, it's about calories in, calories out. So many people tell us like in the weight loss industry, it's just, you just need to get the right calories. Well, some women in the program find themselves, they can't seem to gain weight for the life of them, even though their calories are perfect. So what that means is they are just flushing through their digestion and they're just not absorbing any nutrients or any calories at all. They're not absorbing that, therefore they're not being able to hold or maintain weight. So if you're constantly just fighting with diarrhea, that's a, that's a big one for women that can't seem to gain weight. The reverse is women that are constantly finding themselves bloated or that they're, um, they're, their digestion's sluggish that's when they absorb too many calories, therefore they're just absorbing way too much. So things that are not as effective when detoxing your body, can they help? Yes, but they're not as effective. We're going to find some ways on how we can get the most effective. So we've heard of lemon water. It can help, but is it the most effective? No. Cleanses or detox diets. Um, so this is just a good little kind of study here. It says lemon water cleanses detox diets lack scientific evidence for improving gut health. While lemon water offers hydration and vitamin C, it doesn't directly address gut issues. Cleanses and detox diets can be restrictive and may lack ne necessary nutrients for gut health. They can also disrupt gut bacteria balance. So opting for a balanced diet with whole foods, fiber, prebiotics, probiotics, managing stress and getting enough sleep is more effective for gut health than these three things. So let's find out ways on how we can start to really heal our gut naturally. The first one 
are you having probiotics and prebiotics? They actually support each other, okay? Next one, whole foods. What does whole foods even mean? So these would be the foods that you would see like more on the outside perimeter of the grocery store, less on the inside of the grocery store. Next would be cutting things like soda and sugar. Oof, those ones are very detrimental to gut health. Uh, another way we can have uh, healing our gut naturally would be moving. So get moving. Uh, next would be, um, we have, there's even just prebiotics, enzyme rich foods, which we'll go into. Um, be good to your liver. So don't try to just excessively go into alcohol too much can also, also be really detrimental on your liver. Switch to ginger or green tea, drinking enough water, reducing your stress level, which we'll go into a little bit more, reducing processed foods, getting enough sleep, cutting things that bloat, adding ginger and fermented foods. All right, so let's find some solutions here. So solution number one, as I mentioned, stress, right? So solution one is our nervous system is the foundational piece to our gut health. So resolving stress helps balance the nervous system by reducing our stress hormones. This is where we are activating that parasympathetic system, enhancing our emotional regulation, fostering resilience, enhancing our overall well-being, and better gut health. So mindful eating, deep breathing, chewing more, and actually leaning back. That sounds weird, but when we're stressed, we're kind of like forward, we're forward. So kind of leaning back will help with that. So our parasympathetic state, that's at rest and digest, will fix digestion, have better nutrient absorption, which will help with insulin, help our hormones, improve our immune system, put the body back in balance, and we can start to lose weight easier. It's all connected. Solution two. Now, some of you are going to be like, wait a minute, Danita, are you really telling me fasting? Yes. Now, intermittent fasting is phenomenal when done correctly. However, most women are using intermittent fasting as a way to just skip corners to lose weight. And what we find is that most women are, are protein deficient when they're just aka intermittent fasting, but they're starving themselves. Okay. And so they're just finding that they don't have that, that good of results. And so, but um, let's actually go into fasting, how it actually can be beneficial. Um, one is healthier gut bacteria. So fasting might actually improve the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, which is important for digestion and your overall health. So this is uh, allowing the, the digestion system to rest. Fasting gives your digestion organs a break and allowing them to rest and repair. It also helps improve gut movement. So fasting helps food move through your digestion tract better and it can reduce problems like constipation. Uh, better hunger signals. Regular fasting can make you more sensitive to feeling hungry, helping you avoid overeating and digestive discomfort and also less inflammation. Fasting can reduce inflammation in your digestive system, which may ease symptoms of conditions like IBD and IBS and support better digestion. So my only recommendation, if you want to do this to get better gut, just make sure that you're following the other rules of the program by getting enough protein into your diet. What does that even mean? My rule is if you're having about four times of protein, at least the size of your fist or more, is a good amount that I've seen the women have come through the program have good success. If it's anything lower than that, I find that we become protein deficient. So just make sure we're getting the right protein in if we do want to start implementing fasting as a solution. Next one for gut solution is elimination diet. Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't, but I'll walk you through it. An elimination diet can be a useful tool for identifying food sensitivities and intolerances, which can have a significant impact on gut health. So here's how it works and here's how it can benefit. The first one is you wanna find the problem foods, such as it might be hydrogenated oils, high fructose corn syrup, caffeine, soda, alcohol, gluten, or wheat. Sometimes those can be very triggering. It doesn't mean that you, don't ever, you can't ever have these items again, but if the gut is inflamed and the, and the bacteria are off, we want to just like really give the body a break by just eliminating it. And then we can eventually start to bring it back. Number two is relieving symptoms. It helps with problems like bloating or stomach pain by avoiding foods that bother your gut. Number three is balancing gut bacteria. Cutting out unhealthy foods can help restore a good balance of helpful bacteria in your gut. Lessening inflammation um, can help when we're doing those, that this elimination diet can help calm it down. And then the last one is it can help improve nutrient absorption. So 
So when we kind of cut some of these things out that's flaring things up, we can start to, again, we can bring them back later, but it's always kind of good just to kind of do a little elimination. All right, solution four. Now, if you've tried everything as far as one, two, and three, and all the other mentioned above, here is my recommendation. There are either your healthcare provider, or I'm gonna give a few options on here. If, you're, if your doctor helps you, perfect. If your doctor is not seeming to help you, here's some, here some tests that can. The first one is, I've recommended this, I have tried this one myself, it's a stool test. And this actually will help check for infections, inflammation, and gut bacteria balance by analyzing a stool sample. It's pretty easy. It's, um, uh, it's called Viome, V-I-O-M-E dot com. And um, the, the steps are super simple. And um, it takes about two to three weeks to get the, you know, to, to, to actually get the results back. But well worth the wait if you are trying everything and you're just still seeing some of these symptoms are just not going away. Okay, and then when you do take the test, um, what it will tell you is actually which foods you are allergic to and obviously which ones you should be eating more of. And then also what it will do for you is it will, there's this, um, if you want to do this, it's totally optional, but afterwards it gives you an option of a customized uh, probiotic, prebiotic, and any like vitamins and things like this that you need. And they will actually create based off of your test exactly what the formula is and they'll ship it right to you. And I have tried it and I've had great, great results from it. So teach his own, right? The next one, if um, that's not much of a fan, there is another option, it's called a hair test. And with a simple scan of your hair follicle, uh, there's a company called Earth Spa. They can analyze what might be affecting your body, such as either food, allergies, toxins, minerals, vitamins, and environmental factors. Uh, it's really cool, as far, and it's called earthspa.com. So it's E-R-T-H, it's earth without the A, spa, S-P-A, dot com. That's another one you can check out. Um, so uh, that's the food sensitivity. There's actual breath tests. There's GI panels. There's um, colonoscopies. There's... Um, uh, all sorts of stuff, right? So there's different tests. I want you to, if you're just finding that your gut health just really seems to be off, go towards the problem. Don't ignore the problem because it just starts wreaking, there's a whole layer of problems that start to happen afterwards. So make sure to really, really, really work on the gut. That's important. So if you do have any questions on this, let me know. Um, but that will be the, really the kind of main steps is nervous system number one, two, fast, that can help, three, elimination diet, and four, Go do some tests to really find out what are some things that we need to do as far as um, allergies or uh, things that we really need to help the gut biome. So lots of love and happy gut health. Bye, you guys. Love you.